So uh, Joe likes the dashboard showing the most uh, commonly rented titles, um, but he really wants some extra detail in there now. He wants to see the amount, uh, so the payment amount for each title, uh, and also uh, how many of the actual title we have within our inventory um, in, the, in the DVD rental company. So uh, Joe makes another request to Ashley saying, okay, I really want to, I really want to modify, I want you to mod modify this dashboard to give me more detail. Um, unfortunately, although Ashley knows how to analyze the data, she doesn't necessarily know uh, where that information is held. So she's going to ask Anoop, who is our, our database expert. Um, okay, I need to, I need to pull in these additional fields now. Uh, I need to pull in the amount for the rentals, and I also need to pull in uh, the number of, of uh, items we have within our inventory. Uh, so what Anoop's going to do is he's going to build on the work that Ashley's already done, and he's going to add those additional fields to a to a data source for her, so that she can she can self serve with that analysis. So again, this journey would start within Tableau Desktop. Uh, I'm going to close the work that Ashley's done. I've already published that up to Tableau Server, so I don't need to I don't need to to save it local. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going now to sign into Tableau Server as a noob uh, to show how that view differs. So again, if I go into server and I use quickly sign out as Ashley, and if I say, okay, I'm going to sign back in as a noob. So I am now signed in, and, and what I want to do is I want to I want to find the work that Ashley's just made on Tableau Server, um, and I want to download that and use that use it as a starting point to, to prepare some extra data. So in the server option at the top, I'm going to click on server, and I'm going to click on open workbook, and this is going to show me all the workbooks that I have on Tableau Server. Now, confusingly, this this list first appears blank, um, but what you can see is actually this defaults to my workbooks which is effectively only workbooks that I actually own. Now, uh, because Ashley has published this workbook previously, it's, it's not owned by me, even though I have access. So I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to click on all workbooks. And I can see uh, the workbook appears that we've just published. Uh, this is the, the top titles workbook that Ashley's worked on. Um, I can see when it was modified and I can see who it's owned by. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click open. Now this is going to download the workbook for me and it's going to open it within Tableau Desktop. And yep, I can see that the, the workbook that actually started working on. Now, if I look at the top navigation bar of the Tableau desktop window, it shows me that this dashboard is from Tableau Server. That's denoted by these square brackets that you can see around the dashboard name. So I can see where, where I'm working it. Okay, now I want to add some extra data uh, to, this, to this data source. So I'm going to click on data. I'm going to find the data connection and I'm going to do edit data source. Now I can already see the work that the work that Ashley's done, so I'm not having to not having to redo these joins. Um, but I can see that there's only a, only a few tables from the database that are actually brought into here. Now at this stage, I'm going to actually want to grow this data connection and, and make it make it more comprehensive. Now obviously I, I have I have some requests from Ashley, but I also know that other people might want to use the same data source in the future. Uh, so I'm going to add some additional fields in here. Uh, that I think I think might be useful uh, might be useful for ad hoc analysis. So one of the things that I know is that when we're looking at the rental amount, um, I actually uh, can relate that to how much payment we've taken for that rental by bringing in a the payment table, which is related to rental, and I can just click on the join here to make sure that the uh, the automatic join that Tableau has added is correct, and I I I know that I know that to be the case. I also think it interesting at some point that somebody might potentially want to look at uh, the top customers. Um, I think I think that's the kind of analysis that might be performed. So I'm also going to add in the customer. Now, if I bring in the customer table, I can see the customer. It's actually linked to two places. Uh, it's linked to both the payment and to the to the rental. Um, now. I know this because I have a lot of understanding of the database, um, but again, I, I don't really want my end users to have to worry about this when they're, when they're doing their analysis. So I'm going to make sure that I correct the join for them um, and, and remove that additional join. Um, and the final thing that I think that our users might want to analyze is, is the staff member. Uh, so, so we look at top performing staff members, um, that kind of thing. And again, if I bring in, uh, bring in a staff member from the database into the view, 
uh, again, Tableau has uh, tried to guess how it's joined, but it's not quite correct based on my knowledge of the database. So I'm going to just remove that duplicate join. And I've now brought in all the various uh, elements that I think we're going to need to use to need to use to analyze the data. So I can see those additional fields here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to expose just the fields that I think my user will need to analyze. So at the moment, you can see this is sorted uh, by, by data source order. But in order to make this easier to find, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm going to choose to show it A to Z descending per table. What this does is this automatically groups fields from the same tables together. So as I'm actually working through the data source, I can I can find uh, find what I'm looking for more easily. Now at the moment I have had I've got this selected so that we're not showing hidden fields, but I do want to show hidden fields um, because I actually want to do the same uh, the same process here as as we've done before, uh, and effectively hide everything and then just unhide what I actually want to what I want to show to the user. So I'm going to start by the customer. I'm going to hide everything in the customer table, uh, but I'm going to unhide the email address. Uh, obviously, uh, this is this is this is fake data. So these are fake email addresses. Uh, depending on your your security requirements, you may or may not want to surface your email address uh, in in the view here. But in this in this fictional scenario, um, we might want to enable our marketing managers to perhaps target some of these customers uh, with an with an email campaign. Uh, so we're going to bring through uh, we're going to bring through that uh, that email address. Okay. Uh, we already have everything that we need from the film. If I look at the uh, the inventory ID here, I can see that we have uh, the film ID, the inventory ID. Now I'm actually going to want to count how many items of inventory we have. Uh, so I'm going to uh, to right click on this and I'm going to do uh, unhide and I'm going to rename this as uh, film inventory ID. Just to make it nice and clear when we're working with our, we're working with our, our calculations. Okay. Finally, we have that we have the payment table. Uh, I'm going to unhide and hide everything apart from amount because we know that we have uh, we know that we have the payment amount. Um, obviously, we've, I've renamed this as payment amount uh, just to make that again a little bit clearer if our users are going to be analyzing analyzing things. I also want to bring in the uh, uh, the, the rental date so we can perhaps look at the uh, the timeline of how 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 our customers are interacting with us. So again, if I unhide the rental date. And then finally, if I look at the staff table uh, and I want to, I want to see what uh, what bits of information that we might want to use to analyze analyze staff. So I'm going to hide everything here, and I'm just going to unhide the username uh, so that we can actually uh, report on uh, report on what we want from this username. Um, so, for example, if we wanted to look at the top performing uh, staff usernames, we have the option that we have the option of doing so. So finally, I'm just going to check that I've got everything that I need. Uh, I've got the I've got the rental ID and the rental date. I've got the staff username, so we can look at it by staff. I've got the payment amount, so we can answer Joe's question about uh, the payment amount for each individual individual film. I've got the film inventory ID that we can use to calculate the amount of inventory that we have. Uh, and I also have the film title and the customer email. So I think I have everything that I need here, both to answer this question, and um, but also to answer answer future questions as well. So I'm going to untick uh, show hidden fields. And I'm going to see the overall data source I have here, which which looks looks to give me everything that I need. So now that I've done this, I'm going to publish this data source up so that Ashley can can build on it using um, uh, build her dashboard using it. So the first thing is I'm going to navigate back to the actual dashboard view itself, and I'm going to go to actually I'm going to have a look at the uh, the data source first just to make sure that I actually it looks the way that I would like. So I'm going to unhide these sheets. I'm going to click on one of the worksheets, um, and it, I can see my data source here. It contains it contains what I need. Excellent. So I, I have everything there. So I'm going to hide all these sheets again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to publish this dash, uh, this data source up to Tableau Server. So instead of actually publishing workbook, I'm going to choose this publish data source option. So when we first did this, we had what we call an embedded data source, where that data source is only connected to a single Tableau workbook. Now, what we're going to be doing now is creating what we call a published data source. Uh, now, published data sources are a lot more powerful because you can connect them to multiple workbooks. You could have one published data source that has 50 workbooks, 
um, or even more. Uh, the benefit of doing that is that you only have to make the database connections once, you only have to make the calculations once, um, and you can really make sure that you're you're sharing all those definitions and all those all that logic across across your reports. So I'm going to give this a uh, shared data source a name. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to publish the standard data sources. So now I have access to publish a data source to um, standard data sources. So uh, when Ashley actually published the dashboard, she didn't have access to publish the standard data sources. She only had access to publish the standard dashboards. Now, because I have a different role as, as a data architect uh, within, within Tableau, I have access to uh, publish data to these standard data sources. So I'm going to click that here. I, I should mention that these, these projects were created in advance. Um, Tableau is enormously flexible in terms of how you can design your permissions and your access to, to really meet the, meet the needs of your business. So this only represents one particular use case that's been configured. Um, there's a lot more that you can actually, a lot more that you can actually do with this. So I'm going to publish the standard data sources. I'm going to give this a more friendly name and I'm going to call this uh, rental data. Okay. Again, the permissions are defined by the project I'm publishing into. And again, at the moment, the authentication here is set to prompt the user for a, uh, a username and password, which isn't what we want. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this so that we're embedding the username and password within, within the data source. So I'm gonna, once I've done that, I'm gonna click off here and I'm finally going to make sure this option is selected to say, update the workbook to use the published data source. Now, what this means is that I'm going to, to publish a data source to Tableau server, but I also have a workbook open in front of me. Now this workbook currently looks at the embedded data source in the workbook itself. But once I've published this workbook up to Tableau Server, sorry, once I've published this data source up to Tableau Server, I actually want this workbook to point at this new data source. So I'm gonna make sure this is ticked. Now, if I press publish, I have pushed that up to Tableau Server. Now, a, um, a visual cue that that has, uh, this workbook is now looking at a shared data source, is actually available from the worksheets themselves. So if I click here, you can see this icon has changed um, to be a little square Tableau icon. Uh, now, previously, this was, this was a cylinder indicating that it was a, a, a live connection to the data source uh, embedded in the workbook. But this Tableau icon means that this uh, this data source and this workbook is now published, uh, this data source is published to Tableau Server. Now, at the moment, the workbook that I have in front of me um, is more up to date than the workbook that I've, or the workbook that is currently published to Tableau Server. So I'm going to, again, publish this workbook to Tableau Server so that uh, the change um, to the data source is reflected here as well. So I'm going to go to Server, I'm going to go to Publish Workbook, and again, I have option to publish this to Tableau Server. I'm going to put this back where it originally was, where I actually published it to standard dashboards. Um, I'm going to leave everything else the same. Now in the data sources here, when I click on edit, uh, instead of actually a data source to the database, this actually now has a data source to the, uh, to the, published, the published data source. Uh, so again, uh, I'm going to leave this to have the embedded password so that anybody who has access to the dashboard Autom automatically has access to the data. I'm going to click off this here and I'm going to click publish. Now we actually have a, a, a visual cue here uh, saying that this workbook name is already in use um, and warning me that I'm actually going to overwrite, overwrite the workbook. I'm happy with that because I know that's, that's what I want to be publishing. Uh, so I'm going to click on publish. And yeah, I can see that that's also giving me a second warning. I'm happy, I'm going to press yes. And now that workbook is, is published up to, to Tableau Server. Now, I, as a noob, I'm going to log into Tableau Server to make sure that is published to my, uh, to my satisfaction. So I'm going to log into Tableau Server as a noob. I'm going to go to Explore. I can see that uh, as a noob, I actually have access to three folders. Now, if you remember when Joe logged in, he could only access or he could only see the standard dashboards project, um, whereas I can actually see uh, the ad hoc analysis project and the standard data sources project. So I am going to uh, click in the standard data sources. And yes, I can see the uh, I can see the data source that I've published. 
and I can also see uh, the dashboard that I have just published uh, within within uh, the standard dashboards. Now, say for example, if I had actually uh, made a mistake and I published over the wrong dashboard, then I actually have the option within Tableau Server within any workbook to look at what's called revision history. And now the revision history shows me all the revisions of workbooks that have been published to Tableau Server. And if, for example, I had accidentally saved over Ashley's work with something that I didn't want to, then I would have the option of actually um, downloading Ashley's workbook and, and republishing it uh, just to restore that content. So even if you accidentally overwrite uh, somebody's content, uh, that's that's not a that's not too much too much con concern because you have the uh, you have the version history that you can uh, the version history that you can fall back on. Okay.